You're watching the Vidim Vlog with my friend Seek, the best source for all things symbiote related. Don't forget to catch me in Sony's Venom in U.S. theaters on October 5th, 2018. And also, don't forget to check me out in theaters right now, Shock and Awe, written and directed by Rob Reiner, also starring Woody Harrelson, James Marsden, and Tommy Lee Jones. Thanks for watching. Enjoy the show. What's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Spinning Venom, aka the Venom Vlog. And today we are finally covering the last day of IGN's coverage, which is day five. And uh, I really appreciate you guys hanging in there with me. On Wednesday, I just went overboard and was like, all right, I'm going to film like 10 episodes tonight so that I could, you know, keep up with everything else on top of what this was and then also get a few comic book reviews in there. So uh, I may cut back a little bit next week. I don't know how many, uh, you know, it depends on how much movie news comes out, uh, but hopefully no one else next week is doing a whole week of Venom stuff uh, because that would be uh, hard on me for sure because I'm moving into my new apartment finally. Uh, you'll see the background start to change on Monday. I'll probably box a lot of this stuff up. Uh, I have the two bottles here. I don't know why I put them there. Um, but yeah, so I have a lot of things coming up and I will do my best to keep up. My goal is to try to get into the new place and get everything settled and get everything finished, get my uh, pilot and everything I'm working on, get all that finished by October 1st. So that way those last like few days leading up to the movie, you guys have my undivided attention. Uh, and that is my goal. So I'm going to do my, you know, do my absolute best to keep up with everything for you guys. But TV spots and stuff, I know some new ones dropped, new scenes. Uh, someone was saying some characters were confirmed, uh, although I didn't really want to dig in too much to see if that was true, because uh, really I don't want to get any major spoilers from here on out. There are some things in the movie that I just want to be surprised about and I know doing a Venom show probably it's not going to happen probably people will definitely you know excitedly just tell me stuff and, and spoil stuff and I'm sure that's going to happen so you know hopefully it doesn't but if it does you know I, I expect it you know so I won't be too bummed out um but uh, here, though, we have this clip. So again, if you guys don't want to see anything from the movie, I would say turn away. I'm not going to show the clip. I will put a link down below to the clip in the article. I was kind of surprised that the end of the week, after all the cool stuff that IGN showed us, that they're just ending on a clip from the movie. Um, but what did get me excited about this clip is that our friend Ariadna is in it. And as you can see from the intro, uh, she was nice enough to do one of the intros. We had her and uh, Bats, uh, Martin Bats Bradford, and we had Jared Bankins and Ellen Gorstein. Uh, so we had all four of those actors, uh, you know, do intros for us, which was really nice of them. And this was great, uh, you know, to see her in this scene. So the one scene we get is a little bit about Eddie Brock. So I wouldn't say this is super movie spoilery, but just in case, again, if you want a clean slate, turn away now because we are going to talk about this. Uh, so for those of you who are still here, this scene was pretty neat. I think it's cut up though. Uh, I don't think this is going to be exactly how the scene plays out in the movie, but I could be wrong. It just seems very jump cutty as far as dialogue goes. It doesn't linger on beats that you would probably normally linger on when a character's talking or when they say something. You want to give them a little bit of time for like facial reactions or things, you know, like there's like a flow uh, to stuff, you know, when you do dialogue scenes. And this one felt a little jump cutty. So I'm wondering if this is just a chopped up version of, uh, of what the actual scene is going to be so they could get it down to 30 seconds, you know, for, you know, this purpose to put it online and not give too much away in the movie. So that could be it. I'm not sure, but I did like that Ariana actually, she has a, a line of dialogue. She's like trying to stop Eddie from uh, continuing down this path of questioning that he has. Uh, he starts off and he's just there to ask about the rocket and that's interesting news as well because obviously the major set piece for what looks like to be the ending of the film is the rocket and possibly some kind of launch in some way. And so it looks like Carlton Drake is already gearing up for that, already getting you know news out there and the press, talking to the press about this rocket. And you kind of see in the scene that Carlton Drake He's very good at hiding, uh, you know, the the darkness in him. Uh, he's around Eddie, and he's, like, showing, like, his passion. Like, yeah, I'm really excited. We got this shuttle. And you kind of see him like that. He's almost like an Elon Musk type, you know, type of person in a way where he's just, like, very, uh, you know, charismatic to a, to an extent. I would say Riz Ahmed's a, a lot more charismatic to me than Elon Musk is. Uh, but, uh, you know, he comes out, and he's talking to Eddie Brock, and Eddie Brock is, you know, taking on every word, listening, writing everything down, very retro journalistic tactic of writing everything down. Um and uh, and then he 
can't take it anymore. Eddie is just like, you know what? I don't want to hear the BS. I want to talk about the allegations. I want to make my a name for myself. Uh, you know, Eddie Brock is definitely kind of like a greedy guy in that regard uh, when it comes to his career path, and he wants to make a name for himself faster. He, you know, he's willing to take shortcuts sometimes, and I know some people in the comics interpret it differently, and they took it as a guy who really tried and just failed, and I like that interpretation too. Both work, but this version, it looks like he's very antsy. You could tell he's just like, uh, you know what, let's skip the questions, let's get right to it. And we have Arianda is like, Eddie, stick to the shuttle. And he's like, you know what, I don't want to talk about the shuttle. I want to talk about the allegations. And then you see immediately uh, Riz Ahmed's character go from smiling to, okay, this isn't funny. You know, uh, someone pulled a lot of strings for you to be here, and you're ruining this opportunity, so get the F out. You know, and then he even says, like, you know, uh, at the end, he's like, have a nice life or whatever. Uh, but he does kind of threaten Eddie Brock. He's like, you're done, Eddie. And then he's like, whoa, is that a threat, dude? Uh, and so, yeah, there's you can see that tension building. So it makes him for a good enemy because, obviously, without Spider-Man, you do want someone that uh, Eddie Brock hates. And I think Carlton Drake is hopefully going to do a good job at it. From the scene here, they set up that di 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 dynamic very well. And they set up that chemistry and that anti-chemistry, in a way, of uh, them two kind of not liking each other. Uh, so you see Riz Ahmed, who knows if he even wants to do this interview, uh, because he's like, you know, I got, the, I'm trying to change the world. I don't want to be bothered by some hack writer or someone who's trying to prove themselves. And then he was like, fine, I'll do the interview. And then he does. And then the guy turns out to be a D-bag. So you can kind of see it from both angles uh, that Carlton Drake is just not having it. He doesn't want these lines of questions. And he already approved the the pre, you know, pre-approved questions. Usually when you do interviews with people, you'll send the questions ahead of time so they can pre-approve them or their people can or something like that. Uh, so again, yeah, just it tells us a lot but it also doesn't tell us too much. Uh, but I like that they mentioned the shuttle, and that's going to be a key focal point of the movie, and that's going to be something that's, you know, tied to Riz Ahmed's plans, uh, but then how is Riot going to, you know, uh, kind of take over those plans and use the rocket for his benefits? I guess we'll find out when the movie drops uh, in two weeks on October 5th. So I'm very excited. Less than two weeks now, we're about like 12, 13 days away. So you guys let me know if you watch this clip. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below, and we'll continue the conversation down there. Thanks so much for watching my show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you in the future. Peace.